The Yellowstone caldera is the latest in a series of volcanic structures stretching across the Snake River Plain in Idaho and into northern Nevada. One of the oldest volcanic complexes in the chain, the McDermott Caldera on the Nevada-Oregon border, has many similarities to Yellowstone. The Yellowstone hotspot has been around for a long time, perhaps more than 50 million years. It appears that this earthquake started off the coast of Northern California, and the movement of the North American plate resulted in volcanism that trended across Northern and Northeastern California and into Northern Nevada. Tectonic movements spread these volcanic products northward, and they are now found in coastal areas of Oregon and Washington. About 20 to 22 million years ago the hotspot diminished, perhaps because the rise of magma to the surface was blocked by a plate of cold oceanic crust that was replaced by the North American continent. Magma built up beneath the slab and finally broke open nearly 17 million years ago with the Columbia River basalt eruption, a massive outpouring of molten basaltic lava that occurred along Idaho's borders with Washington and Oregon and sent lava flowing everywhere. Road to the Pacific Ocean A series of more explosive eruptions also began, forming calderas similar to those at Yellowstone today. A series of now-buried caldera systems stretches from the Nevada-Oregon border and across the Snake River Plain in southern Idaho, progressively younger approaching the Yellowstone caldera. The oldest caldera of this trend is located on the Nevada-Oregon border in an area that is the traditional homeland of the Shoshone Paiute tribe and near the Fort McDermott Indian Reservation. And the most spectacular of the collection of several calderas and associated ash flow units is the McDermott caldera. In contrast to the caldera on the Snake River Plain, the McDermott caldera is well exposed, and because of its extensive mineralization, it has also been well studied. The first eruptions in the region included silica-rich rhyolite lava domes that began approximately 16.7 million years ago, shortly after eruptions of the Columbia River basalts began in the region. The proportion of rhyolite lava flows continued to increase over the next hundreds of thousands of years until the formation of the McDermott caldera through a large eruption around 16.4 million years ago. The eruption released about 1,000 km3, 240 miles 3, of material, almost the same as the eruption during the formation of the Yellowstone caldera 631,000 years ago. The resulting collapse left a structure that looked like a keyhole, wider to the north, 30 km, or 19 miles, than to the south, 22 km, or 14 miles. The north-south caldera is about 40 km, 25 miles, long. By comparison, Yellowstone's caldera measures about 70 by 45 kilometers, 43 by 28 miles. Most of the ash from the eruption fell back into the caldera, which may be up to one kilometer deep. Both inside and outside the caldera, hot ash, sourced from a very hot rhyolitic magma chamber, flowed under its own weight as it was deposited. This process, called rheomorphism, results in the formation of spectacular folded layers within the deposit, making it very difficult to distinguish from lava flows in some areas. Hydrothermal fluids circulate throughout the caldera and especially along the ring faults. In some places, this results in large ore deposits, mercury and uranium are mined in some areas of the caldera. The consequences of mercury mining require significant environmental remediation efforts. As is common in collapsed calderas, dome resurgence occurs soon after caldera formation, with the magma chamber filling back up and pushing the ground upward. 
Eruptions of rhyolite and more fluid basaltic lava flows also occurred 300,000 years after the caldera collapse, and stopped about 16.1 million years ago. Soon after the collapse of the McDermott caldera, a lake formed in the closed basin, characterized by a thick buildup of lake sediments. Even though the lake still exists, the thick ash deposits resulting from the caldera eruption continue to cool and release gas and salty solutions that mix with hydrothermal fluids associated with the magma chamber below. The fluid releases compounds such as lithium from recently erupted volcanic rock. When lithium-rich gas and brine reacted with lake water, Lithium enriched the clay minerals in the sedimentary lake sediments that were documented by USGS geologists in the 1970s. Many of the conditions that exist in the McDermott caldera today can be found at the bottom of Yellowstone Lake, where high-temperature hydrothermal fluids are expelled from vents at the bottom of the lake. Likewise, the McDermott caldera has many similarities to the caldera on the Snake River Plain and can be used as an analogy to better understand that system. 